Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph My God will never fail Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the Yeah. 
Hey everyone, welcome to Vespers. I'm Rachel Barlow and man, I miss you guys so much. The music this evening is none other than Angelo and he is going to do an incredible job. The speaker tonight is Sam Lenore. He was a chaplain at La Sierra University and now he is changing the world with Adventist Health. And my name is Luke Irvine and I have just a quick announcement about what is happening at Vespers next week. If you've been missing the worship and music experience on our campus, then get stoked because next week we will be bringing you a little piece of that worship virtually. A bunch of musicians have been working on four different worship songs, recording their parts separately and combining them into beautiful video collages of passionate worship, even though we're so far apart. So tune in next week to see those videos. And if you're a musician and are interested in getting involved in this project, you can shoot me an email at the address provided below in the description. Before we start, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, I ask that you be in this place. And Lord, I know that it's been so different doing Vespers over the computer instead of being there in person. But God, I ask that you touch every heart of those who are listening, that you are with the singers and the speakers tonight. And Lord, I ask that we walk away from this changed and different because you entered our hearts and God, we just love you so much and we are so excited for when we can be reunited again. We love you, Lord. Amen. Grace, what have you done? Murder for me on that cross Accused in absence of love Sin washed away in your blood Too much to make sense of it all I know that your love feels well The scandal of grace You died in my place My soul lived Oh, to be like Give all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you. Ever hope in my heart. Death, where is your sting? The power is as dead as my sin. Give all I have 
Jesus, no you. Jesus, there's no one beside you. Forever open my heart.
Can suffering lead to hope? I read the news every day and it appears that things are hopeless. And it's hard to believe that the suffering we read about and that many of you are going through right now, that suffering can lead to hope. And yet, that is exactly what Paul writes to the church in Rome. I'm going to read from Romans chapter 5. And verse 5 is where Paul begins to explain how suffering can lead to hope. Therefore, he says, we've been justified through faith and we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, and here it comes, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. That suffering produces perseverance, Paul says, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Paul knew something about suffering. He'd seen a lot of it. He'd been lashed, his skin had been ripped off of his skin, his back. He'd been beaten with rods, and they likely broke a lot of his bones. He'd been stoned, he'd been imprisoned, he'd been shipwrecked, and he'd been hungry a lot, he tells us in 2 Corinthians. When Paul talks about suffering, he's not imagining it. He's seen a lot of it. He's experienced it personally. But here's what I don't believe Paul is saying about suffering. I don't believe Paul is saying that God causes suffering, that God causes COVID-19 or cancer or any other terrible thing or natural disaster that we experience. And I get that reconciling God's omnibenevolence to the suffering we see and that many of us are experiencing right now is difficult. But a model that explains suffering as God causing it just doesn't line up with what I believe the Bible says about God. And God, I find in the Bible saying that he's interested in our well-being, in healing, in wholeness. And that is always God's intention. So I don't believe that in this text Paul is saying that God causes our suffering. The second thing I don't believe Paul is saying is that we are to find joy in suffering. That we are to find joy in 100,000 Americans and many more around the world dead from COVID-19. That we are to find joy in some of the horrible violence and injustices we have witnessed this week here in this country. That we are to find joy in unarmed black men murdered. We harness these moments and we use them to propel us to transform not just ourselves, our communities, and the world. This is what Paul is saying. We harness these moments to change the world. I also don't believe that Paul is saying that we actively look for ways to suffer because that is what produces character and perseverance and eventually hope. We don't pursue suffering. We should do things that are hard that stretch us and that help us to grow. I don't like burpees, but I tried to do burpees during the month of April, and I ate a lot of kale, and it built my character, I hope. Uh, but what do I think Paul is actually saying in this passage? I'll tell you. I think Paul is saying that suffering can bring around and about the change that we need. That perseverance, character, and hope, they can be the result of what one author calls the long obedience in the same direction. The character and hope are the result of disciplining ourselves to not quit when it gets difficult. And that Paul is saying that when we take up a mission, a great cause, when we follow Jesus, we will suffer, but character and hope will follow with that suffering. To be able to stand the suffering and the trouble that will bring you, You must have a sense of mission and the belief that God sent you into the world for a purpose, to do something important, something that will change the world. And especially this week, I'm thinking about all the movements that have taken place in our society, the people that challenge discrimination, be it race or gender or age or religion or disabilities or sexual orientation. Now, that's just a short list how difficult it must have been, and it is and will always be to challenge systems that oppress and abuse. And there are days when 
it seems like we have not made any progress towards equality, towards the fundamental respect of human beings, and seeing the image of the Creator in every person. It feels like the forces of evil are prevailing. But don't lose heart, says Paul. This is the time to persevere, to let these moments shape our character. And eventually, that's where we find hope. Those who have had to suffer for a worthy cause, they don't give up. If you read, if you learn about them, you can see people with a single focus. They had a lot of ups and downs. The progress in our society and the places that we live would not have happened if those who led these movements had said they did not want to suffer or persevere. And setbacks are where the real champions of a cause are created, and that's where they're defined. Some years ago, I had the privilege of meeting Father Greg Boyle. He's the founder and director of Homeboy Industries, the world's largest gang intervention and rehabilitation program in Los Angeles. If you're from the SoCal area, Los Angeles area, you know this name very well. 100,000 men and women have been through his program and they've overcome their past, they've reimagined their future, they've broken intergenerational cycles of violence, they've gone through counseling, tattoo removal, job training, legal help. Father, Father Greg is so awesome, his vision was a place where people could overcome their tendencies to resolve their conflicts or their, their differences through conflict. So he started a bakery that eventually grew into a tattoo remo removal service that eventually grew into restaurants. There's even one in uh, the LAX, Los Angeles airport. He just wants communities to be healthier. So one day I invited him to come and speak at the university where I was working, La Sierra University. And when he got there, he gave us this beautiful lecture, lasted about an hour and a half describing how when he moved into the area where he was called to serve, it was a war zone. Fatal shootings several times a day. The violence and the death was just unreal. And he began this ministry knowing that it would be very, very difficult. That inviting gang members of opposing gangs to make bread together seemed ridiculous. To make bread and sweet rolls and cookies was absurd. But in time, because he persevered, things began to change. So as he was in my, on my campus explaining this, he also began to talk to us about and explain the incredible pain and the horrors he had seen. He explained how many of the gang members that he had worked with went back into gang lifestyles and the violence and that he had buried many people that he was close to that many people rejected his appeal to peace and reconciliation. So after his presentation, one smart student asked him, so how successful would you say your program is? Give us some numbers. And I will never forget his answer. He turned to the student without pausing for a second. He said, I am 100% successful. The student said, nah, you just said a lot of people continue their gang affiliation and lifestyle. So I'm looking for actual numbers. <laughs> and Father Greg said, I told you, I am 100% successful. And the student said, well, how, how, can you, how can you say that? And I will never forget these words again. He said, I am 100% successful because I am 100% faithful. And he repeated it two more times and he gave credit to Mother Teresa, who was the first one to have said this. I am 100% successful because I am 100% faithful to what God has called me to do, and I will persevere. Isn't that great? And isn't that the picture of perseverance, character, that eventually brings hope and inspires hope? I'm inspired by that. And I pray you will too, and I pray you'll be inspired by the words of Paul. And that in the middle of whatever suffering we find ourselves, that we will persevere and allow the suffering to shape our character that we may one day find hope and offer hope. Mahalo nui loa, Pastor Sam Lenore for that message. Will you join me as we close off with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your love and your kindness and your faithfulness to us. 
We thank you for being with us um, throughout these nine weeks being online. And we thank you for continuing to give us the wisdom and the knowledge that we need in order to succeed throughout this quarter. Lord, we continue to pray for healing. We pray for justice. We pray for peace. We pray for voices to be heard. We pray for your comfort. We pray for you, God, to continue to show us your presence in our lives. Help us to center our focus on you and that everything we do may not only be in glory to you, but be centered in the name of Jesus Christ. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray these things. Amen. Just a